Now this big boy that I'm holding here is the Lenovo ThinkPad P17 Gen 2. This is a follow-up to last year's Gen 1 that, uh, quite frankly, was a beast. It was a tank in terms of the build quality. Uh, it's got a 4K display. It's got an 11th gen processor. I've got the Xeon processor in this. And it's got the RTX A5000 GPU. Let's see if this mobile workstation is worth the hefty price tag. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the ThinkPad P17 Gen 2. Maybe not so mobile workstation coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everybody know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was provided by Lenovo, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing starts at $1739.42, and my review unit, as configured here, comes in at a whopping $4,590.12. Yeah, it's not cheap, but this is a professional workstation. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. You get a 230-watt power adapter that uses Lenovo's own proprietary connector, and you also get the extension cord. Now, I reviewed last year's model, and this actually comes in at a little bit heavier at 8.09 pounds or 3.67 kilograms. Yeah, this is a big boy. And just like the Gen 1 model from last year, this thing is built like a tank. And of course, you'd expect nothing less from this ThinkPad line. You want to have durability, and this will not disappoint you, I can guarantee you. Okay, let's check out that port selection. We're going to start off on the left side. We get an HDMI 2.1 port. Next to that is a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port. And next to that is your optional SIM card slot for the 5G. Again, that's optional. It's not standard. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And next to that is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. On the right side is your optional smart card reader, an SD card reader. It's full size and the cards do sit flush as you see here. So that's good. And next to that is another USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port. And also on the right side is a Kensington lock port. And you get some more ports on the back. An RJ45 Ethernet port. Next to that is your power port. And then you get two Thunderbolt 4 ports. They are full service. They do data charge and display out. And finally, you get a USB-C port. But that one is not Thunderbolt. And not surprisingly, this is an excellent port selection. And just like the Gen 1 model from last year, there are two SODOM and two unoccupied M.2 slots below the small service hatch. The main SSD and the other two SODOM slots and the M.2 2242 wireless WAN slot are located below the keyboard. And this is what the innards look like with the bottom plate removed. And as you can see, it has the dual fans for the cooling and it has a 94 watt hour battery. We'll get into the cooling and the thermal solution as well as the battery life later on in this review. Now, my review unit has one terabyte of SSD storage. It's Gen 4, and that's pretty good. As you can see from these reads and writes, these are excellent speeds. Now, this has Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.2, and I've had no issues whatsoever with either one of them. Good connections, good range. So far, so good. Now, before we get to the benchmarks, I think it's important for us to understand that this is not your everyday or your normal consumer grade laptop or even a business laptop that we normally see out of the ThinkPad line. This is a professional workstation grade laptop. Well, what does that mean? Well, it has certain ISV certifications and optimized drivers for professional applications. Things like CAD work, 3D rendering, medical imaging, those type of software applications require a certain type of driver that this has. You won't necessarily see the best performance when it comes to these synthetic benchmarks that we normally see on consumer and commercial grade laptops. That's not what you're gonna see here. What you're really going to get the benefit in terms of this workstation are these specific type of applications and these drivers are optimized for them 
And of course, these are very good numbers or respectable numbers when it comes to these synthetic benchmarks, as I mentioned. But again, where you're going to see the real benefit are going to be the professional workstation grade applications. Now, this has the Intel Xeon W11855M. It's a six core, 12 thread processor. And it also has the NVIDIA RTX A5000 GPU with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 video RAM. And that's where this all comes into play. Now, this is not a gaming laptop, and I want to make that clear. You can get better choices out there for a lot less money than this. But if you want to play the occasional game here and there, this is more than capable. It certainly has good performance out of that CPU-GPU combination. But don't be mistaken, this is not a gaming laptop, and I don't want you to think this is going to be the greatest thing for AAA titles. Now, as far as the surface temperatures are concerned, it never got overly hot, but there are a few spots that will really heat up, but never getting overly hot to the point where you can't touch it. Here you can see the front of the laptop or on the top of the keyboard, you can see it does heat up there. And then of course, on the underside, it gets a little bit warm, especially where the CPU is located. So that is something to keep in mind. Now the fans will kick in under heavy load and they will get kind of loud actually when they really ramp up. As you can see, reaching over 60 decibels, that's actually pretty loud. Let's give it a listen. But when you're doing normal everyday tasks like Microsoft Office email web browsing, the fans remained relatively quiet and will only kick in intermittently when needed. Now, there are two options when it comes to the display. You can get a 17.3 inch full HD option, 1920 by 1080 with an IPS anti-glare display. But of course, that will get no brighter than 300 nits. Now, I don't have that entry level display. What I have in my review unit is a 17.3 inch UHD 4K display. That's 3840 by 2160. It is an IPS display with an anti-glare coating and it can reach as bright as 500 nits. We'll get into that in just a moment. It's also an HDR 400 Dolby Vision display. So watching high dynamic range content has been excellent. And it also is a factory color calibration out of the box, which is going to be great, especially if you're going to do color grading, video editing, Photoshop, and the like. Now, as you can see, this has some really deep blacks, good white points, decent contrast, and it has a low Delta E score of 1.39. That means that anything below two is considered color accurate, so this won't disappoint in terms of color accuracy. And it has excellent coverage of the color gamut, 100% sRGB, 94% Adobe RGB, 84% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 89% NTSC. What does that mean? Well, if you're a content creator, this is going to be a good panel to do Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, and of course, color grading. And Lenovo claims that this will get as bright as 500 nits. Well, I actually measured 519 nits, which is even higher than the claim brightness. And that's even better. And I got to say, this has been a great display in terms of both indoor. And if you want to take this big boy outdoors, it'll be good for outdoor because it does have that anti-glare coating. No unnecessary glare or reflections. And that's excellent. The viewing angles have also been very excellent on this IPS panel. And so this is the front-facing camera on the Lenovo P17. But as far as this webcam is concerned, unfortunately, it's a 720p webcam. I think a holdover from last year as we're seeing a move to, of course, 1080p webcams and a very higher quality. But what do you think about the video and audio quality? Let me know in the comment section below. Is it good for your work-from-home needs? Is it good for your hybrid work needs as we find ourselves uh, partially working from home or maybe going to the office, let me know in that comment section below. Now, a couple of things to note about the camera. It's an IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello, and that's always great. It also has a shutter switch. So if you want more security and privacy, that physical shutter switch on the camera gives you that. And then it also has a fingerprint scanner that's located below the keyboard. And setup was easy and registered my finger each and every time I used it. It worked really well. And yes, you can open the lid with one finger. And the lid goes back 180 degrees, as you see here. And I'm absolutely loving the keyboard. Now, this is an excellent keyboard, which is no surprise since ThinkPads traditionally have some of the best, if not the best, keyboards on the market. Now, as far as the tactile feedback, it has been excellent. It has some really good key travel. Never feel like your fingers will bottom out. And it's extremely comfortable for typing in extended periods of time. And for those wondering, this is what the keyboard sounds like.
And of course, it has a numpad, and that's going to be a good benefit for those number crunches out there that do Excel spreadsheets and the like. And this has a multi-stage backlight, which allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. Worked well. And it has a precision touchpad with physical mouse buttons. I thought two-finger scrolling was very responsive, and all the gestures work as you'd expect. Now, this also has the track point, which is part of the ThinkPad DNA, a relic of the past, but some people actually love it, and it was really responsive as well. And like its predecessor, Lenovo has placed the stereo speakers above the keyboard. And they are lacking a little bit in bass. I thought it could use a little bit more, but the volume and the mids were actually pretty good. Not bad for a mobile workstation. And as I mentioned earlier, this has a 94 watt hour battery and it did nine hours and 42 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. What does that mean in real world mixed usage? You can expect anywhere between seven and eight hours depending on what you're doing. But please keep in mind, everybody's use is a little bit different so your mileage may vary. Now they do give you a 230 watt power adapter in the box and it takes a little bit less than two hours for a full charge, not too bad. Okay, to wrap it all up, what do I think about the Lenovo ThinkPad P17 Gen 2 here in 2022? And I got to say, this is a very interesting and powerful workstation, but of course, it's not for everybody. It's geared towards those professionals that need this class of performance when it comes to those professional applications. I like its bright, sharp 4K display, the workstation performance, as we talked about with the CPU and GPU combination, excellent keyboard, excellent touchpad, and of course, it has the track point. It also has really good battery life with its 94 watt hour battery, optional 5G, and has a great array of ports. And of course, there are some things that are not perfect about it. That would be it's big and it's bulky, and of course, has a 720p webcam. But those are not deal breakers by any stretch. And if you're in the market for a mobile workstation, the P17 Gen 2 is one you want to look at. Yeah, I'm getting my workout, ladies and gentlemen. This big boy uh, comes in at nearly eight pounds or maybe a little bit above or whatever it is. Uh, pretty hefty, but it does pack a little punch under the hood, as I showed you. Uh, really rock solid build quality. This thing is built like a tank, made to take a licking and keep on ticking. Uh, as I showed you the numbers, this is the Intel Xeon W11855M mobile processor, six cores, 12 threads. Uh, decent performance. Again, this is very specialized towards the professional applications with the ISV certifications. That is what this is geared towards and that is what it's optimized for. And as far as the display, we're looking at a 17.3 inch 4K UHD display, 3840 by 2160, super bright, over 500 nits, anti-glare coating, so you don't get any glare and reflection unnecessarily and that's good. Uh, really a lot to like about it. Of course, this is about $5,000, maybe a little bit less as configured, starting price of about $1,700 or $1,800. Not very cheap, but of course, those that are looking at this are not so much concerned about the price tag as more as they are concerned about, will it get the job done? And that's what this will bring to the table. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. Again, a very capable, big boy mobile workstation. Again, not so mobile, but a workstation nonetheless. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.